So uh, you've been in the situation where you know things are going grim for somebody, and they they they, they, they turn to you and they say, "Oh, when's it going to end?" Right? You've been in that situation. You understand that people have grief, trouble, whatever going on. You're oh, I just wish you know, when's it going to come to an end? And that's a natural human response. Now Mark's written for persecuted Christians in Rome. And you can just see, you know, man or grand or auntie or somebody from time to time just throwing up her arms and saying, ah, oh, I just wish it would just, you know, when's it, when's it going to end? Those persecuted Christians in Rome then have, have heard that question, they probably asked the question too. And Jesus is talking about something coming to an end. And he's talking about the end of a religious system that they've really hung on to. When things are tough and when things are difficult and we want X, Y, Z that's going on to end, we, we tend to have sort of like rocks in our life, the thing we, we hang on to and we cling to, at least that's, we know where we are with that, you know? And these Jewish guys that Jesus is dealing with, they've got the temple. And maybe three times a year they go up there and it, it's familiar. And it's, it's gone on for a long, long time. It's gone on for millennia. And it's a source of stability, I guess, and security in life. Tend to have those. Now it's going to be coming to an end. It's been going for millennia, but it's going to end, and that's going to shake people. Jesus is talking for a large part of this chapter about the religious system, the temple at Jerusalem, coming to an end there. And then at the end of that, he talks about the whole world coming to an end, like everything is going to come to an end. And that's relevant. It's relevant to. to Greco-Roman people, the people who are receiving this gospel, now being persecuted by the Roman Empire because they've gone away from the old religion. They've gone away from the things that people held on to. They've gone away from either emperor worship and all that stuff, all the ancient Greek gods, if that's the world they're from. Or as Christians, they've gone, you know, to some extent they've gone away from their temple and, and all that stuff that was going on because they're Christians now and things have changed. Um, so the old religious systems are gone. And Jesus, in this passage, is talking to his disciples about that happening. Here's how it comes about. Yeah? Does that work? Yeah. Uh, they're leaving Jerusalem. Um, Jesus is leaving Jerusalem. And that's not incidental. Uh, as Jesus was leaving the temple, Verse 1 of chapter 13 of Mark. One of his disciples said to him, Look, teacher, what massive stones, what magnificent buildings. And Jesus says, it's coming down. It's coming down. Do you see all these great buildings, replied Jesus? Not one stone here will be left on another. Every one will be thrown down. And the obvious question then, that the disciples then raise as, as they're sitting together quietly afterwards, the obvious question they say is, as Jesus was sitting on the Mount of Olives opposite that temple, Peter, James, John and Andrew asked him privately, tell us when will these things happen? What will be the sign that they will be fulfilled? Now Jesus leaving is not incidental. Jesus walking away from the temple is God leaving the temple. Just as he's come into Jerusalem at the beginning of this part of Mark's Gospel, Jesus approaches a fig tree. And the fig tree's got no fruit on it. And Jesus curses the fig tree and you think, what's going on? And then he goes up to the temple and he clears it of the money changers and the fruitlessness of the whole system as it's come to be is evident. And when they come out, the disciples are astonished because there's the fig tree and it's withered from the roots. Now, a tree in a bush withers from the tips, doesn't it? It dies, you know, the leaves die off and it comes on back down like that. This one has been cut off at the roots, like as if God has gone, no more life fruit. You're not bearing fruit? No more life. Now Jesus is coming out of the temple and the point is made. Then he left the temple. He's gone through a process. He goes into Jerusalem as acclaimed as king. The religious authorities, the religious structures they've got at that time reject him. They try to find ways, they come at him to try and find ways to bring him down, to kill him. Doesn't work. He keeps on giving good answers, right answers. People see the good answers. Somebody then says, that was a good answer. Jesus says, you're not far from the kingdom of God. And then no one dares to ask him any more questions. It says. So Jesus takes it to them. And he starts putting things back to them. And saying, look, you know, look. 
And at the end of that, they got no answers, they got no answers. Jesus leaves. He comes out of the court of the, of the women. He comes back down through the court of the Gentiles that he cleared. He walks out through the eastern gate. He comes down the steep little path that goes down and across the Hinnom Valley and up the other side. And there he is, sitting on the Mount of Olives at the other side in the evening sun at the end of the day, looking across. And there's Herod's temple. And it's all, we know from Josephus, it's, it's bright white shiny marble in the evening sunshine. You know, And they've gilded it and they put gold on places and whatever. All stuff that was not in God's word to do with his temple. And it's got this tremendous appearance. All these great buildings, says Jesus, not one stone is going to be left upon another. Awesome architecture. But God has gone. And you can go to Jerusalem today and you can, you can look at the big stones, the scale of the stones. They weren't even part of the temple. They were the bits underneath the temple. You know, they were rubble in the foundations. And there's these dirty great rocks. It's awesome. 